Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Thanks for joining us on our August harvest video. Now this one's just a little bit different. So I'll tell you about that in just a moment. The camera guy is behind the camera. Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for joining us tonight. So this one should be fun, but let me tell you why it's a little bit of an emergency harvest. We have really been struggling a lot with the rodents this summer. And let me show you a perfect case in point here. This tomato looked absolutely beautiful last night. When I came in here this morning, look what I found. Huh. Something took a big old bite out of it, whether it's a squirrel, whether it's a rat, whether it's a bunny, I don't know what it is, but they are getting my harvest and we gotta get the harvest in before the rodents or the critters get them today. So we're gonna start right up here on the container garden and pull whatever we can so that we can have to eat it before the critters do. So right here at the cucumber in a five gallon container, we have got some absolutely gorgeous Space Master cucumbers. Now we did a video on this a couple of months back and would you look at this cucumber. Gorgeous. This is a big one, all right. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here. So you can harvest them at this size or you can take them just a little bit smaller. Probably be a little bit sweeter that way. Here's one that's a nice size. And I love the Space Master because they're a nice compact variety of cucumbers. They grow beautifully in this five gallon container. And the exciting thing is there's a lot more little babies coming on here. Look at that one. There's a little teeny tiny one right here. I love the little babies, they're oh so cute. So hopefully those make it to full size before something else gets them. And here's one right here. I'm gonna actually go ahead and harvest this one here. I know it's a little bit small, but like I said, better us than the critters. And we've been succession planting cucumbers or planting them maybe once a month or so. We've got another plant right over here that's going to be ready to harvest probably in a couple of weeks so make sure that you plant your cucumbers plant a new fresh wave so you get a, a continual harvest of cucumbers i don't think this one has any that are quite ready yet what is that is that sun scald or <laughs> very good cherry yes oh, okay thought... that was where i was going to go next oh okay well i so... thought it was a bite no that is sun scald so thankfully that's not a bite matt can you scooch over just a little bit there buddy scooch over mac <laughs> there we go <laughs> He always seems to sit right in the way. So what happens is when the temperatures get hot, we had a really hot week last week, um, the sun kind of scalds the peppers, but it's no big deal. You can cut that part off and eat the rest of the pepper. These are actually my first California wonder peppers of the season. We tend to get our biggest harvest here in California in August. Yep. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely a gorgeous pepper. That is a beaut. I think camera guy's gonna have to break the grill out tonight. That's my favorite way to eat California Wonders. Grilling it, uh, slightly blackening them on the grill, it really brings out the sweetness of the flavor. Oh, this is so pretty. Now you can harvest peppers pretty much at any stage. If you notice here, the back is a slightly brown color. The front is red, a little bit smaller than the first pepper I harvested, but just try harvesting at different stages and see which way you like them the best. There's really no hard and fast rule for harvesting peppers. But I do like to cut them off the vine rather than pull them, or off the bush rather than pull them, because you don't want to damage the rest of the plant. Oh my gosh, one more beauty. It's a little bit misshapen, but it is a beautiful, gorgeous pepper. Wow, 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 I'm so excited. And the cool thing is, there's some more peppers coming on here. Got a nice small California wonder, and some more flowers here teeny tiny buds there which means we're going to have a lot more plants out of this uh, a lot more peppers out of this plant now just a few, few weeks ago i did the mid-season boost on the entire container garden it absolutely exploded in growth after that tons of green tons of fruit it's really looking good i'm very excited about how this portion of the garden is doing and i've got a couple little strawberries to harvest back here the squirrels especially like the strawberries i've actually <laughs> been inside and watched a squirrel come over to the container and actually pick a strawberry and munch it down. So we definitely have to get these berries off. Let me move out of the way here so you can see the strawberry crate tower. This is growing beautifully. It's just exploded in growth over the next few weeks, over the last few weeks. Now you want to pick berries when they're completely red from the top to the bottom with no white spots. See this one is not ready. It's got some white spots, it's not completely red but this is a beautiful, gorgeous, nice, shiny, ripe berry. 
we're going to have some yummy yogurt berry smoothies or berry bowls in the morning. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And wait till we get down to the bottom of the garden. We have a ton of blackberries to harvest tonight too. Ooh. Oh, those are one of my favorite summer treats. So delicious. These are juicy and red and ripe. The towers are a really good way to grow berries. You can grow a lot of berries in a little bit of space. These are just stacked up plastic crates. You have the Smart Pots crate liners in them. And the berries are just loving them. Berries really like the drainage, so they do especially well on the towers. Now over here, we do have a ripe one, a couple ripe ones. Oh my gosh, look at those. On the uh, Smart Pots wall saddles. And these are really handy little planters. If you're, if you're uh, pressed for space, grab a couple of these at smartpots.com and they hang right over your rails. There we go. And they give you a lot of extra growing space. So it's a great way to grow more in the little bit of space that you have or just add extra growing space to your deck. Those are so pretty. Okay. I'm really packing it in the Smart Pots long raised bed here. There's a ton of vegetables in here. I just planted a brand new tomato plant. My, this is a Black Beauty eggplant that's not quite producing yet, but it, hopefully it will be soon. But one of my favorite cucumbers of the summer is the Japanese long thin cucumber, which has been climbing up this trellis, just producing for me great all summer long. I gotta get back in here and grab this one. These cucumbers are like a foot or two long. They are crazy cucumbers. This is my favorite DIY uh, trellis made out of tree branches. Would you look at this, you guys? Isn't this a crazy looking cucumber? The skin is kind of spiny, but no matter how long it gets, it's super, super sweet. So we have been loving these. And you can see they grow in really interesting shapes. There are just a ton more on here. Some up here, little tiny ones. So this one will probably be producing for me for several months still. Just tons of little baby ones all over this plant. It just can't beat a garden fresh cucumber. And I did plant a fresh new round of cucumbers right down here at the base of the trellis. See these beautiful fresh green leaves? So that way when the Japanese cucumber is done producing, there'll be a new one to take its place. And you can see the difference in the leaves. The Japanese cucumber, the leaves are looking kind of old, spotted, getting a little bit of disease. But the fresh new one is looking absolutely beautiful. So get out there and get a new round of cucumbers planted. We're gonna head down below, but before I do, I just noticed something about this plant. There were leaves all over this plant last night. And if you'll notice here, it is completely stripped of leaves, which either means a squirrel's getting it or a hornworm, and I have not seen any hornworms, so I have a feeling it's some kind of critter munching down the same one that ate this tomato. Maybe we need to get the trail cam back out here so we can find out for sure what we're dealing with. I think we do. Yep. Well, let's head on down below. Oh, you know what? There's a cucumber right here. <laughs> <laughs> Always an funny. adventure in the garden. <laughs> you are so funny. So here we have another Japanese long thin. Interesting. And this plant is not looking so good. So I don't know how much longer I'll keep this plant in there. Sometimes it's just easier to start over with brand new plants than to try and keep an old plant alive. They've actually grown a little bit just since yeah, our garden tour have. a few weeks ago. Oh, so they're starting to look like real little lemons. All right. It's so much fun to head out to the garden grocery store and harvest what you grew. I never cease to be amazed and thrilled by the whole process. Now down here, we've got some peppers, tomatoes, and some more cucumbers to harvest. So I'm gonna get back in here and harvest a few of the poblano peppers. These are absolutely beautiful. I actually need to put a little bit more of a support in. Can you see how heavy the branch is getting because it is so heavy with pepper? So I'm gonna take these off right here. And these are kind of a mild type of heat. They're really good for chili rianos. They're great in salsa. And this plant actually overwintered. It grew over the winter here in Southern California. And then I pruned it heavily back and it regrew just the most gorgeous, gorgeous peppers. These are just absolutely beautiful. So put them here next to the California Wonders. Now these you can also pick at about any size that you like. There's some more on the plant that are kind of changing color and generally speaking, the longer you leave them on, the hotter they get. But the rodents, the squirrels, the critters tend to leave the peppers alone. So I'm gonna leave these on and that way I just pick what I need to use for some fresh salsa. 
Now these are such a beautiful little tomato. They're called apple yellow and they are really sweet little tomato, kind of shaped like an, like an apple. Actually, I think these might be the morning sun. I think I'm getting these confused with another one. But one strategy you can use for your tomatoes to keep their critters from getting them is pick them before they're completely ripe. So just when they start to blush, these ones are already definitely turning yellow, but there's some in here that aren't quite ripe. See these have a little bit of a green to them, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick them. And then what you can do is just place them on your countertop to ripen, or you can put them in a paper bag, close the paper, paper bag up, and they'll ripen uh, there in the bag. It will kind of help the ripening process grow a little bit, go a little bit quicker. So go ahead and take off any that are just starting to blush or just starting to turn. That way we get them before the critters do. The ones that are really green and hard we'll leave on because usually the critters leave those alone. We're going to have a special little basket just for the cherry tomatoes tonight. Here we have a beautiful little hot and spicy pepper. And I can't remember the name of it. I'm sorry, you guys. I lost the tag as I am prone to do, but these are such a pretty little pepper. They're growing upright. We've had a couple of these. These are pretty darn spicy. So if you happen to recognize them and know the name, please let me know. I would love to, to know. Now these, I don't eat. <laughs> Too hot for me. Jerry doesn't really like the spicy peppers, but I like to add them to salsa or just put them on the grill. It kind of tends to um, soften the heat a little bit. Not Especially like, if you take off the ribs, take out the ribs and the seeds. Yeah, I was going to say, not like Rodrigo, the gardener <laughs> in Baja, loves peppers. Oh, man, he I loves can't them. can't believe what he does. Yeah, he's on Instagram, and he just eats his hot peppers, just pops them in his mouth and does little taste tests for them all the time. It's crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and take these all off because we have a lot of new peppers coming on. See those? These are kind of cute because they grow upside down. We'll take the, the ripe ones off, the ones that are ready off, and we'll get a fresh new crop growing here. Now peppers you can also leave on the plant to kind of dry up and uh, save the seeds from them. Or if you have way too many hot peppers, what you can do is let them dry really nicely on the plant, or lay them out on a tray to dry, and then kind of string them up and hang them up in your kitchen for decorations. It's fun to decorate with your garden fresh produce. Here in this red planter, we have a lot of volunteer plants, actually. This cucumber here volunteered for the second year in a row. What that basically means is I didn't plant this plant. Uh, the birds dropped the seeds or somehow the seeds got into the planter and the cucumber grew. And I actually have no idea what variety this is because I never planted it. So I'm not even too sure where the seeds came from, maybe from a neighbor or something. But this is kind of a neat one. It's not the long green thin. We had these last year and they're super, super tasty. I like volunteers, just the whole concept of it. I do too, it's I love neat. them. I and like the cool thing is they usually are some of the strongest plants in the garden. I pretty much just leave them alone and they just wanna grow. So these are volunteers. I also have some tomatillos in here that are not ready, but they, they are also volunteers. I grew tomatillos in this garden bed a couple years back. And I love tomatillos They make beautiful salsa verde. So I should get a good harvest out of those later in the summer or in the fall. There's a tomato plant tucked in here, which I actually did plant, but it's getting shaded out by, the, by all the other vegetables. So I'm sure it'll grow in its time. It's way back in here. The thing I kind of like to do is let some plants die out. Then it provides, uh, you know, clearing those out will provide more sunshine. This tomato back there, can you see that? That way I kind of spread out oh, the harvest. Oh, now I see it. Throughout the fall, it's kind of it's, fun. I didn't see it until now. Yeah. And then the lily put zinnias I just love. They bring the pollinators in, these little yellow flowers. And the lily puts are in the uh, container garden and the late summer garden. So you can grab those for a quick bloom later in the summer. Well, I got blackberries on the hill right behind me here, but I think I'm going to save the best for last. We're going to harvest some tomatoes now. But let me grab a separate basket because I don't want them getting squished by all the cucumbers. Tomato harvest are one of my favorite, favorite, favorite thing of the summer. I know I have a lot of favorites. We've got a lot of some tomatoes over here and I'm a little bit scared to see what I'm going to find. You know what this is for? Critters. Critters. <laughs> 
I covered them up because I did not want the critters getting them, and I honestly haven't even looked under here for a couple of days. So oh, I'm getting in for the shot. Uh, I'm nervous to see. I yeah, hope the me critters too. didn't get it. We'll see if it's ready. The struggle is real. Oh, this is the Golden Jubilee, one of my favorites. And it looks like... Oh, it looks good. Oh, my gosh. I think we're in the clear here, guys. Oh, this oh. is one of my favorite, favorite tomatoes. This is so, so pretty. We harvested some other ones and made a garden fresh grilled cheese the other night. Oh, mm. my gosh. It was delicious. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> it was so good. It was a sliced tomato, some white cheddar, a couple pieces of ham and some basil on sourdough bread. You guys, you got to try it. It was incredible. Now, if you notice here, there's a little bit of sun scald on this tomato as well, but no bites on it. Yay. I'm so excited. So uh, this one here, probably the critters won't uh, pay too much attention to it until it starts to get ripe, but I am going to go ahead and cover it up. The net bags, have kind of been helping, but the critters have been getting through. So that's why I protected my really special ones with the shade cloth here. So far, so good. Let's go check out the other plants. We've got a few more tomato plants back in here. This one is the Chef's Choice Black Tomato. The rodents have already gotten several off this plant. It's been mm. really a bummer. But we've got a nice one here that they actually left alone. I forgot to cover this. I meant to come out last night and cover it, and I totally forgot. I thought it was a Chef's Choice Black, but I could be wrong. It might be something else. You can see it's starting to split just a little bit, which sometimes is a sign of too much water. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case with this one or not, but we're going to go ahead and take it again so we get it before the rodents do. And these also just got the midsummer boost. Lots more new growth on this plant, and we should be harvesting from this with any luck for a few more months. We can usually harvest tomatoes up through October, sometimes even in November if we're lucky here in Southern California. Same thing on this one. You can see the bottom there has a little bit of, that's called cat facing. Sometimes that happens in the heat or when the pollination, you know, just isn't complete, something along those lines. So let's just check the one in the back here. I actually tried an experiment with this pot. These are all growing in 20 gallon smart pots. I didn't have anywhere to put two plants, so I just put them both in the same pot. And we're getting a few tomatoes off it, but I think they'd do better probably if I split them up. They'd have a little bit more room for the roots. But here we got two pretty ripe ones. These are nice. Add those to our harvest basket and go check out some more peppers. Now this garden bed here is in the sunniest spot in my garden, so it's usually where I put my pepper plants. They love the warmth and the sun. And we've got some beautiful Jimmy Nardellos. I love Jimmy Nardellos. They are a sweet pepper. I actually didn't grow them last year and I really missed them, so I put in a couple of plants this year. The one in the back is doing especially well. These are beautiful peppers. This one has still has some green striping on it. What a gorgeous color. I'm gonna leave this that one is. here to ripen up a little bit more. And uh, we love these on the grill. I'm so excited. Oops, we didn't have them last year, but you can just kind of slice them down the middle, clean out the seeds, and then just lay them flat on the grill to kind of blacken them and char them just a little bit. Or I love to also make fresh pico de gallo, which is where I cut up fresh tomatoes, fresh peppers, a few hot peppers, you know, a lot of sweet peppers, and then add some onion, cilantro, it's like just a fresh salsa, a raw salsa. It's so tasty, so fresh. So pull these off and I should be getting peppers, harvesting peppers here for a couple of months. And hopefully with some luck, I'll be overwintering a lot of these plants as well because they get a lot of sun here in this spot. Now I'm really excited about this pepper. This is a brand new one to me. It's called the Sugar Rush Peach Pepper. Baker Creek Seed and it's gonna be a fun one. It's supposed to be really sweet, so it'll be fun to try it. These are really beautiful little yellow peppers. What a really pretty shape, isn't it? My first harvest of these this summer. So we're gonna take some off and we'll give them a try for dinner tonight. We lost one down there. Some in the back. Wow, I love the shape of this one. That is so fun. Yeah, those are really interesting shapes. <laughs> We are going to be grilling it up. I think I might have to th think of some other ways to use peppers besides grilling, though. 
Got a good little basket here. What I like to do after I harvest too is give another little boost to the plants. Give them some of the good dirt plant food or the fish fertilizer just to kind of boost them into gear again. You can usually get a couple extra crops by doing that. Now this pepper here is an interesting one. It's called a nata pino. I think that's how you say it. It's mm. a really mild jalapeno pepper. So Jerry, you might even like this one. Change of color just a little bit. I think you should try it. I'll make some okay. salsa with this. Yep. I think you might like it. That sounds good. Just gonna take a few off here for our salsa. These hold very well on the plant as well. And like I said, the critters never bother the pepper. So I think we're good on these. I think that'll be good. Now next door here is more California wonders. Now I like to pick these, you know, when they're ripe. I don't like to leave them on the plant too long because they start to shrivel up. I don't want to waste any of these. Oh my gosh. This one is wedged right in here too. So I'm going to have to kind of, here we go. Oh, that's just so pretty. It is. I love these guys. We've got one more at the back that's ready. I'm going to leave these on to ripen up just a little bit more on the front there. But this one, oh my gosh. Well, there's tons of ants back here. I have to get my little ant traps out, my DIYs. <laughs> Diatomaceous earth actually works good for ants too, so I may try and sprinkle some of that down. Look at all the ants. <laughs> brush them off before I put them in the basket so we don't bring ants into the house. Oh, this looks so pretty. It does. I keep saying that. It does. You it know does. what? Let me grab some chives too, because I'm going to put chives in our salsa. Ooh. It's got some weeds in there, so I'm going to leave that bunch and grab some from right here. The chives are a fun herb because you can just come out and give them a little haircut and they grow right back. And I might have to kind of pick through the weeds here. Yes, I've got weeds in my garden too, just like you guys. I've got lots of videos on growing chives and harvesting chives, so go back and watch those. And I've got some chive seeds in my herb seed collection. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot to say, I've got a sale going this weekend, 20% off everything at CaliKimGardenAndHome.com with the code HARVEST. And every order gets a free seed packet. So head over there and grab your seeds, especially the fall garden collection. Now's a great time to plant for fall too. Now over here is my giant tomato plant or my plant that produces giant tomatoes, which unfortunately the rats have already gotten a couple. So I'm gonna uncover the shade cloth here, see what they've left me to harvest. I was hoping that I would get a couple more giant tomatoes out of this one, but we shall see. But the good thing is we can mm. still grow tomatoes into the fall, so I'm hoping for some more. I'm afraid to look. Me too. Oh, it's always a risky thing here. Oh, well, no. actually, I don't think those are rodent bites. Let me undo this. I think that just might be some bugs. I don't mind cutting off bug damage, but I'm not going to eat a tomato that has rodent damage. <laughs> just can't do it. It's too risky anyway. You don't really want to do that. Might have to cut the bag. Well, I don't know. I, I think it might be some nibbles right there. I think yeah. they might have got to this, maybe before I covered it. Oh, bummer. So that one's kind of a wash. Let's see the other one here. Now, they're not the full size I would like. This one looks good. It does look good. Mm -hmm. Take that one. This is the Megadom, Megadon, I believe it's called, tomato. And they are super, super meaty. We did get to harvest one off this plant. Okay, that one definitely has some bites out of it. So this one's gonna have to, unfortunately, be tossed. But it looks like we got one good one. And these tomatoes are delicious, super meaty. So they're great for even salsas, but we just like to eat it fresh. Now I wanna take a quick little peek at the Black Beauty eggplant. Got lots of flowers on here. Don't have anything to harvest yet, but hopefully we will, maybe on the next garden tour or two. Because down in here, look you guys, I've got my first Black Beauty eggplant of the season coming on. 
Let me get in there a little Hopefully bit. With a little bit of luck there, we'll have some eggplant to harvest. I love Black Beauty. It's great for eggplant parmesan or just to slice up and throw on the grill. So pretty. Now here is the biggest emergency in the garden right now. This is my favorite tomato of the summer. It is the Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato from my tomato seed collection. Look at this, guys. You know what this is, rat protection. Oh my gosh, I have not looked at this for about three days and I'm kind of scared what I'm gonna find. Mm -hmm. I know some are ready, some are not, but we'll probably take off whatever we can at this point just to protect the tomatoes. Now, this is my first year growing this tomato and if you guys saw on our garden tour, they were beautiful. Hopefully they still are beautiful. Large tomatoes, green tomatoes change color just a little bit when they're ripe. Oh my gosh, let's see what we have under here. I really wrapped this up good to hopefully protect it. Uh -oh. Ooh. Looks like we have a casualty here. How in the world did they get through? Let me pull this whole thing off so we can see all of them. These are probably Maybe even one pound or more tomatoes. Yeah, they definitely they're big. some of the biggest I've ever grown. And this is one of the sunniest spots in my garden, so this plant is absolutely thriving. But they must have got under. Oh my gosh, they've gotten this one. Mm, that's a bummer. Cut the bag off. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to look at the other ones just yet. Look at their teeth, they're so sharp. Ooh, definitely some rodent damage. All right, well this one's gonna have to be tossed, unfortunately. Mm. Let's look at the others. Hopefully they weren't able to get up all the way through the shade cloth here. I hope not. It's actually a good thing I covered them. There's a little bit of heat damage too on the, on the leaves. The net bags help deter them, but they only help so much. I think this one's okay. The tomato grew so large, the bag has been on here for maybe a month or so, that it grew into the bag. So I'm gonna have to cut the bag off, check out the tomato. I think we have success. Oh my gosh, this one looks perfect. It does, it looks it's gorgeous. beautiful. Look at the striping on here. So you can tell when a green tomato is ready to harvest. It does slightly change color, and it has just a bit of a give to it. The skin is a little bit soft right here. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, it's so pretty. So the top is still pretty firm. All right. But we're not taking any chances. What a gorgeous yep. tomato. Look at the size of that. Good call. Okay, we might have to definitely make garden grilled cheese tonight. Let's check out the other ones. Yeah. One by one. But they're all coming off tonight for sure. Any that have slightly turned, we're taking them. This one looks good. Really? I don't think that's a bite. That's great. I think it's just part of the tomato. If it is a bite, it's probably just a bug bite. It's definitely not a rodent bite. So I'm perfectly okay with that. When we open it up, there might be a worm inside, who knows, but no big deal. We can cut that out and wash it off. It'll be fine. Another beautiful one. I am so thrilled. Okay, we've got a couple more to take off here. This one I'm leery about. I just had the feeling. I don't know. Scott, oh, let's take it out and then look at it a little closer. I can't believe how they've grown into the netting here. Pretty crazy. I'm gonna cut it off first and then take the netting off. It'll be easier that way. This one definitely has grown interesting. It's an interesting shape here. These net bags are pretty handy. Um, I'll put a link to where I got them on Amazon. They're very inexpensive, so I don't really have too much of a problem cutting them off. I can reuse them anyway. Now this one has no rodent bites, but it does have a lot of different things going on. This is either blossom end rot, or I think it's probably cat facing, like I mentioned earlier, where there's a pollination issue or a, um, a heat issue. 
and it's got a little bit of, it's not really splitting, but it kind of grew sort of funny, but no big deal. Heirloom tomatoes always have a lot of character to them. And this is a beautiful heirloom. So you can it's, still eat this one? You definitely can. All you have to do is cut this part out. Oh, There's, wow. It's nothing wrong with the tomato. It's just um, the way it grew or it got a little bit damaged from the heat or hmm. because of lack of pollination. I but heirloom know. tomatoes always have a lot of character. And this is an heirloom that I will be growing year after year. In fact, I just actually started some new seeds for these. So we may get some winter crops, we'll have to see. It's got one more to harvest here of the Aunt Ruby's German Green. I think we might be in the clear with this one too. Oh, this is so pretty. I love these tomatoes. I can't wait to taste it. So it's actually a little bit overripe. Can you guys see right there? It's a little bit soft. It's actually a little bit overripe, more of the cat facing there, but no bites. So this one's all good for the eating. This would probably be one we would eat right away so it doesn't rot or anything like that. I'll throw it in the basket. It's a good thing I got that separate basket, right? And if you guys notice, there's a few more green ones on here, but these are super, super hard. They are in no way ready to take off. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna wait until first blush, when it first starts to turn, get a tiny bit soft. We'll come out here and hopefully protect them from the rodents. And I'll probably put that shade cloth back on after we shoot the video. So they should be okay for a couple more days. Okay, oh, right next here, I forgot, almost forgot. I've been really looking forward to harvesting this. This is the Lista de Gandia eggplant. I think that's how you say it. This is a gorgeous purple striped eggplant from my eggplant seed collection. Look at that color. Oh my gosh, it's just so pretty. Now eggplant, you know when it's ready to harvest, when it has a little bit of a shine to it. So these might be just a tad past the perfect time to harvest, but that's okay. What happens is when they get a little bit past the harvest time, the seeds grow a little bit larger on the inside um, and the flavor isn't quite as good but this one, I can't wait to try it. That's really pretty colors. I think colors. it's still gonna be really delicious. Really, really pretty. And I think we've got another one back there too. It's our first harvest of these this summer as well. Now this one is definitely a little bit overripe. See those brown stripes? So I should have probably gotten this a couple days earlier, but we were kind of holding off just a little bit to make sure they sized up. So I'll check this one a little bit sooner next time. Now here we have a lot more California Wonder Peppers growing, not ready to harvest, but let me just show you the difference between the ripe ones and the ones that aren't quite ripe. These are just such a beautiful pepper. Look at the beautiful green color and they'll start to turn probably over the next week or so and slowly but surely they'll become this beautiful bright red color. So it's a good way to uh, spread your harvest out. I think I planted this plant maybe a few weeks past the time where this plant was uh, put in the ground. But lots of peppers on here and lots more flowers. We'll be harvesting off this one for probably a couple of months. Now right next to it is another pepper that's new to me this year. It's called the Sweet Blot Pepper. Another Baker Creek seed pepper. Look at that beautiful color. Purple, yellow on the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this one. See how the flavor is. And then if I like the flavor of this one, we'll keep an eye on when the other ones are ready to harvest. Look at that gorgeous color. That is incredible. So pretty. Well, my baskets are getting a little bit heavy and we still have a lot more harvest to go, which is super exciting. So we're gonna head over here to some more tomatoes. Now this one I know for sure is the apple yellow. I love this tomato, it's delicious. This is where we did the mid-season boost video a couple of weeks ago. And look, you guys, there's already a lot more yellow tomatoes ready. So I've got my cherry tomato basket here, and these are definitely ready to harvest. Nice, bright yellow color. Yeah, they are, really. And look at the shape of those. They're so pretty. Kind of a little bit like an apple. So it could be the other ones were actually yellow apple, too. <laughs> I'm not sure. I frequently get my varieties mixed up, but I know these ones for sure are yellow apples. I'm gonna harvest these and leave none behind. None that are turning color anyway. Take that one. Got a little nibbler right here. See that? It's funny how the critters uh, take a little bite out of several. I guess they just want to snack in the garden just like I do. This 
especially when I get these ones on the bottom because they love the lower hanging fruit. So this plant has seen a lot of growth just in the past two weeks. We did the mid-season boost after we got back from Maryland. A lot of new leafy growth on the top. So taking all the ripe tomatoes off will definitely uh, put more energy into the plant, growing even more fruit for the rest of the summer. Don't forget out, don't forget to get out there and harvest your vegetables, guys. Just so you get them before the critters do. And when you harvest, the more you harvest, the more they produce. When you harvest, it sends a signal to the plant to keep on producing. But when you leave things on the plant, the plant goes into like seed production mode. Like beans sometimes start drying up when you don't harvest them. But this tomato is putting out the fruit. So we'll leave this one that got munched on behind for the critters to eat some more. Yummy. Pretty excited. Three harvest baskets almost full. And we're going to head over here to the Smart Pots deck where I know I have some patio baby eggplants. Now, if you've never grown patio babies and you're growing in containers, you have to grow them. They are the cutest little baby eggplant you've ever seen. And they're really great when you slice them up, kind of have them, throw them on the grill. They're super, super delicious. So I know I've got a couple that are ready in here. Let me pull one out and I'll show you guys how adorable these little eggplants are. They're a great container variety. Whoops. They're not an eggplant that you would use for eggplant parmesan, but they're beautiful if you want to make like a baba, canoe, baba ganoush, the eggplant dip, or slice them up and grill them or roast them in the oven. So eggplant, like I mentioned, are ready to harvest when they have a really nice sheen to the skin. Really beautiful purple color on those. Nice compact plant. If you're going to do it in a container, I'd probably do it in about a 10, a 10 gallon container. A Smart Pots works great for these. 10 gallon or bigger would be perfect. So see how these are kind of dull? These are past their prime here. So those will probably go into the compost pile. I think we got them all. Ooh, I just saw a cucumber back there. It's always fun to get these little surprise veggies. Whoa, here's another big one. Oh, no. I totally missed this one earlier. Another Japanese long thin. Wow. I think we're going to be taking a basket over to the neighbors later on. And here's one right down here. The Japanese long thins are fun because you can leave them on the vine. They hold really well on the vine for even up to a couple of weeks. This is a nice small one, so we'll grab this one out. And Can't see, even get my camera down see there. See the taste difference. I know, it's kind of hard. It's so much going on. There we go. So the small one and the big one. It's kind of fun to experiment and harvest things at different stages. So you can see which size that you like the taste the best. So the big one and the small one, it'll be fun. Now let's head up the hill because I know we have some zucchini that are ready to harvest. If you have ever grown zucchini, you know they grow like crazy. So from day to day, they can grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, one thing I love to make out of large zucchini is zucchini lasagna. We've had a ton of grilled zucchini this summer. So I was kind of letting this one get a little bit bigger just so I can make some zucchini lasagna. Look at this, guys. It's not too big, but it's just right for zucchini lasagna. And what I like to do when I pick zucchini, you can either cut it off with a knife right at the stem here, but to me it's just as easy to kind of twist it slowly. And ideally you probably want to pick zucchini a little bit smaller, but these big ones are great for zucchini bread, zucchini muffins, zucchini lasagna. You just slice the zucchini up and use it in place of the noodles in lasagna and it's so flavorful. Wow. You got to try it. There are a ton more cucumbers in here, but I think I'm going to hold off on harvesting because I'll probably pick them in the morning, then bring them over to the neighbors. But you can see how prolific these long green thins are, and they are beautiful. So pretty much anybody that stops by our house gets some of these. Now on the end here, we've got some market mowers, which are from my cucumber seed collection. These are a beautiful cucumber as well. Let me just pick one of these too. 
They are gorgeous. This one, again, is a tad overripe, but you know what? They're still pretty sweet, even though they're yellow, this particular variety, so I love those. But I did plant a second wave of cucumbers that's climbing up over the trellis here, and I just saw a little sneak peek up the hill where we've got some more zucchini. I think I'm gonna have to leave all these harvest baskets here. Getting heavy. <laughs> it is getting heavy. And you know what? I did plant a new round of tomatoes as well. This is the chocolate sprinkles. Just put it in as a transplant about a week ago. Did the mid-season boost to it. We've already got little tomatoes on it. This is a beautiful kind of brownish striped tomato when it's ripe. So it will grow up over this garden arch and provide us with some late season tomatoes. So if you have a couple months left in your growing season, get some, a fresh new round of determinant tomatoes planted. They'll harvest in a couple of months and you'll have some winter slash fall tomatoes. Now up under the sunflower forest here. Oh, wow. What in the world is I that? I had no idea it was so big. I don't even know what that is. It was is. hiding under the sunflower forest. This is my vertical zucchini. <laughs> you can't even get in here. Growing up the tomato cage. Oh, you guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jerry, it's a little bit of a challenge to film in the sunflower forest, isn't it? Sorry for all the bumping. <laughs> okay, Viewers. let's pull this baby out. Sheesh. We're gonna really have to, uh, maybe zucchini steaks on the grill would be good with this one. This one is massive. I'm going to try and back up a little bit. You guys can see what kids in here. It's kind of fun, actually. When they get this big, they do the seeds inside do get rather large. So ideally, again, pick them when they're a little bit smaller, but these are great for cooking and baking. And while we're here at the sunflower forest, I'm going to grab some of the large red cherries. Oh, is that what you're calling this? The sunflower yes. forest? I love it. That's a perfect name for it. Off of our um, garden arch here, and these tomatoes are delicious. They're in my tomato seed collection. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick all these off here that I can. You know, the critters have been shredding a few of them every night. I find little broken pieces of tomato here on the ground. Lots of green ones. Whoa, coming out of the forest here, guys. <laughs> the leaves are getting in my hair. And uh, we'll grab these too. So, whoops, that one just fell. So uh, this one, I'm gonna, I need to come out here and trim up all these um, leaves here and it'll help the plant be a whole lot healthier and grow a whole lot longer. This is plants getting a little bit shaded out by the sunflowers, but the one on the <laughs> other side right behind you, Jerry, <laughs> it's always an adventure in there. So I'm halfway up the meandering path, <laughs> trying to not fall and get the shot. Good job, okay, Jerry. where are you going now? Great. So here on this side of the tomato arch gets a lot more sun and wow, what a difference. You guys can see all these beautiful red, gorgeous, large red cherries. I kind of just pick a few every time I walk by and it's fun to kind of snack on them in the garden. They're really nice size cherry tomato, a little bit bigger than your typical cherry. That's why they're called large red cherries. We're just going to take all these into the house tonight. Wow. They do look really, oh my gosh. really good. They look scrumptious. We're going to be eating from the garden grocery store and giving plenty away over the next few days. Filling up our cherry tomato basket. So rewarding to uh, know that we planted this back in the springtime. And here we are out picking what we grew. You guys love that feeling? Make sure you let me know in the comments too what you guys are harvesting right now. I love it when you go out to the backyard and come back with stuff that's gonna go in the dinner. It's always fun. You want to grow tomatoes up an arch it's really easy just put your tomato plant at the bottom of the arch and then you just kind of weave the branches up through the arch as it grows and this is the ladder mesh trellis you just kind of push them in and out of the trellis and before you know it you have a beautiful tomato arch that hopefully meets in the middle a nice little trellis of tomatoes oh my gosh these are so good Tomatoes for days. We actually have a cucumber growing in here as well that grew over from the trellis next door, or not next door, but in the next garden bed over. Look at this cucumber, Jerry. Oh, it's down there. Yeah. I was looking. <laughs> this is the Market Moor, beautiful cucumber. I think it's time to make some pickles.
Now, Jerry, watch your step. We're going for my favorite harvest of the night, the blackberries. Come on Let's over, go. guys. I actually had to grab another basket for this one. And we've been harvesting little handfuls every day, but there are a ton in here. So I cannot wait to get in here and harvest. Got these little small baskets here for the berries <laughs> and I hope it's gonna be enough. Oh my gosh. These oh, berries are me... huge. Look at that. Yeah. We've beautiful. been seeing those from the edge of the deck too. That's right. Now these are nice and black, which is a good sign they're ready. And you know blackberries are ready when they, you just barely tug them and they come right off. That's when you want to harvest them so you get the sweetest flavor. So if you pull and there's a little bit of a, a, a pull to them, they're not quite ready. I'm gonna take that one. Or if they're slightly red at the top, but there are so many ripe ones in here. Now blackberries are a perennial. A lot of people have asked me about that lately. They're a perennial bush, which means they come back year after year. See how this one isn't quite black? We'll leave that one here. But they come back year after year. During the winter time though, they go dormant and the leaves die back. The canes turn kind of a brown, dead looking color. Then you cut them back and the more you prune them in the winter time, the more berries you're gonna have the next year. So last winter, whoo, this one fell off. Last winter I pruned these down to just little sticks. They're about like this. And this year we have a bumper crop. They will also um, root if you stick the stems in the soil and then you can get free blackberry bushes. So when we prune back the canes this year, we'll definitely uh, bring you guys along for that. I'm just gonna climb up here, <laughs> let the camera roll and okay. start harvesting, okay? Go for it. Better bring my harvest baskets with me. It's a good way to get exercise. I'll start at the back. These are huge. Yeah, they are. Wow. Oh, this is gonna make for a good breakfast. I think I might have enough to do a blackberry cobbler this weekend. Ooh. I'll take a few shots of that and put it over on my Instagram. Calikim29. Oh my gosh, look at this. The mother load. I cannot get over how big these berries are. <laughs> Incredible. Maybe we should bust out the ice cream maker. We haven't used that for a while. Blackberry ice cream would be good. So usually a blackberry season lasts about a month or so, and then they're pretty much done until the following year. Let me know what kind of berries you guys have grown in your garden and what you like to make out of them. Oh, that one's not ready. You really have to peek underneath because you can miss them if you're not real careful. We've been pretty lucky the birds haven't gotten these yet. Yeah, that's true. This is so much fun. I found Jerry, you dropped it when you were barbecuing the other night. <laughs> Can you Those are tongs. throw those up there, would you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not too many ripe ones up here. In fact, there's still some green ones. So let me head down there and get the rest of the ripe ones. Oops, here's some. <laughs> I don't want to step on any either. Now, ideally, you'd want to trellis your blackberries somehow. But honestly, these I've just let sprawl and they've done pretty well. We have the space right here. But next year, I might have to put some kind of a trellis system in because <laughs> they're quickly running out of space. You guys, Kim is so happy right now doing this. <laughs> she just could do this all day long. Oh man, love it.
We really don't have to buy any produce from the store at all this time of the year. We have it all right here. Two beautiful baskets of blackberries. I finally have enough to make a blackberry cobbler. I've always wanted to do that. We're gonna go over here and check out the rest of the harvest baskets and close out the video. What an epic harvest tonight from the garden grocery store. Two baskets of blackberries, lots of cherry tomatoes, some beautiful heirloom tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, peppers, and two humongous zucchini. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me in the garden tonight, you guys. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah, it Let was. Let me know what down below what you're harvesting from your garden grocery store. Keep on growing. Lots of the season left, and we've got fall gardening yet to come too. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next video. video.